A lot of different categories, but there was the Repco Bathurst 1000, yes. the biggest Australian event of the year. Biggest S- snooze fest of the year. It was also a snooze fest as well, um, but the, it's also got mixed feelings because I personally didn't mind it because it's an endurance. But yes. what did you think of the race? Yes, there wasn't uh, barely any on-track action, and we will get into why and stuff like that, but what do you think? I think... I mean, look, always, it's it's Bathurst, right? I mean, you know, from Thursday, you're glued to the TV, uh, checking out all the action, all the support categories. There were some fantastic battles that went on. You know, shout out to Jaden, you know, winning a, you know, winning a race on Bathurst Sunday in the in the Super Utes. That was and, special. Yeah, I mean, overall, a fantastic festival of motorsport. It is our biggest, you know, uh, weekend mm. of of the year for for as a nation. In terms of the action, you know, it's, you know, the practice sessions and all that. There's a lot of crashes, a lot of things that take, took place. But it just goes to show the the competitiveness of, of the category at the moment. You know, top 10 covered by three tenths of a second on a track like this. If you look back, sort of, say, 90s or early 2000s, it's never been more difficult to win. And it just goes to show the, the professionalism of the category, the professionalism of the drivers and everybody. It's a huge level up. Absolutely. It was unreal. And even though people say it was boring, it's just an impressive, it just shows how impressive everyone is because there was the only retirement that we had was when Matt Payne crashed. Yes. There hasn't been any car faults or anything like that. Everyone drove so well. This was actually the fastest ever Bathurst 1000 in history with five hours and 58 minutes and three seconds um, compared to 2018, which is the second fastest, which was six hours and one minute. So we've finally made it under the, under the six hour threshold. It only took about 60 odd years, but we're yes. finally here. But I, the build up is incredible. This event event is very unique. It is very, uh, our version of the Melbourne cup. Yes. Um, even if you're not a racing fan, you, will always at least know what Bathurst is or tune into it. You'll watch at least 20 minutes. Exactly. You know, even if you know nothing about motorsport. But for the racing enthusiasts and, and the people that are love it and breathe it, you know, I mean, watching the sector times and watching, you know, two of the fastest drivers in, in Australia and probably two of the fastest drivers in the world mm. go at it and push their vehicles to the limit for the last 30 or odd laps. It's great. It's great. Oh. It's it's fantastic. I loved it. And th- yeah, okay. Don't get me wrong. It was boring. It was a bit difficult to watch, especially for casual fans who are just wanting some action. Yes. But the strategy battle between Erebus and Red Bull with Brock Feeney and Brody Kostecki, um, that was really cool to see. They were basically battling out neck and neck the whole race. Yes, they were 15 seconds apart at some point. But in terms of strategies, they're always pitting together. They're always, um, you know, there wasn't you know, a humongous gap between them. and Definitely. And I great. think, you know, like um, uh, the appreciation of Todd Hazelwood uh, drive and, you know, how how well he drove. And hopefully it opens up doors for him to, to come back into the championship. I think when he first arrived, there was a bit of, um, I don't know. I don't think he appreciated the opportunity as much as he does nowadays. Uh, there was a lot of, um, can we say cockiness? Just say ego. Just you know, there's a bit of ego. Ego. There's a bit of ego going around back then, and being young, and you know he's come through the ranks, and then he finally got to super, uh, supercars, and you could just tell there was a bit of ego. Whereas now there's like a a huge amount of appreciation for the opportunity that he has, and he absolutely drove brilliant. Another South Australian to win the great race. So you know, uh, Percat did it. Now he's done it, and you know we've got many others. You know over the years, but it's great for South Australian motorsport, and. Uh, Look, overall, I mean, I enjoy it. You know, like, I mean, for me, it it, it was it was great to, um, to to sit there and 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 watch the race unfold the, the way that it did for the championship. You know, Red Bull, shout out to them again. Two yeah. cars on the podium, super solid race, super mm. solid uh, pit stops, um, incredible professionalism, and they now won two in the championship as well. That's it. And also, uh, I was going to mention this later, but we might as well do it now. They have. Uh, at this point, clinched the team's championship Yeah, uh, with two rounds to go. They've got a 1,225-point gap between them and Tickford, 
and the maximum points on offer is about 1,100 and something. So they're safe. Yeah, and also Brown, you know, I think I think he had the pace to, mm. to potentially challenge them and, and go after it, but he thought about the championship and P3, P3, you know, yeah. like it bring the points home and don't run there any risks. Absolutely. And it just showed because he's extended his gap now, 200 point gap, 230 or so over Chaz Moster as well, who's now dropped to third. Yes. Uh, Safini finished second, but um, no, it's going to be an epic uh, final couple of rounds. But yeah, the thing is, um, the race wasn't as exciting, but I think people tend to forget it's an endurance, right? You don't Great. win it um, battling straight away and stuff like that. Yes, we've seen some cracking battles throughout the years, but uh, at the end of the day, an endurance race is all about who can survive the longest and who can survive the best and the most up the front. I think we've seen also in the last couple of rounds of, of MotoGP, we've mm. seen the two fastest riders with the best bikes going at it, lap after lap, fastest lap, you know, pushing the limits. Motorsport at the top is changing a little bit. Mm. You know, it's becoming a little bit almost robotic. You know, these drivers are so perfect. These teams are so perfect. Mm. The preparation is so perfect. And so it really will come down to like, you know, a crash in MotoGP, for yeah. example. You know, like the, the riders are just pushing so hard that they crash. In, in car racing, in this particular race, it didn't happen. Gold Coast, Adelaide, you know. We've Sydney. always seen chaos there. Always. Always. And we saw last year, remember? Shane Van Gisbergen had a crash with Will Brown. Yes. Championship was ended on that one Saturday. So Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah. it's... um. Motor, like I said, motorsports is becoming, you know, it's more professional than ever. Very difficult to win a race out there nowadays, you know. Long gone are uh, the 80s and the 70s when people could smoke a cigarette and still be yeah. a race car driver. Exactly. You know, those days are gone. These guys are every day in the gym, every day working with a sports psychologist, uh, every day working on their mental game, um, every single day on the simulators. You know, it's just... Uh, it's a different level. Exactly. And I think that's one of the problems with some of the fans, and I'm going to get some hate. That's okay. Um, they're just stuck in the past. Yeah. And obviously supercars is evolving, and they need to evolve, otherwise they're going to die. And it just shows that they're willing to evolve with the new finals format next year. I know. You that's brave. are still trying to work your head around, but I've... I'll, I'll, no, I'll, no, no. You I'll, got it? I got it. Yeah, yeah, I'll look at you. No, no, I got it now. <laughs> I got it. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about it, by the way? You know, you did mention about old school fans, and I am. I am one too. Don't I, I, I am an old school <laughs> fan, and yeah. racing is on Sunday yeah. and Saturday's quality. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there's a borderline between entertainment and being a racing championship. And I understand what's happening. But. I don't, I don't know. I think we should have not promoted. We shouldn't have encouraged NASCAR to continue down this path. <laughs> we should have gone the other way. Um, the numbers will tell. Well, yeah. Interesting facts mm. about this year's race because there were a lot of people discussing the fact that uh, um, it was more, you know, motorsport is more popular than ever. Yeah. However, the numbers are in. 193,000 people and 219 people attended this year's Baffers, which is, however... 10% <laughs> less than last year's event. Well, there you go. But, however, TV numbers mm. on KO are 26% up. Oh, well, there you go. And overall, the TV streaming side of things, it's mm. never been more popular. It was the most watched Supercars Bathurst event of all time, but the live attendance was down on the year before. That's probably more just of cost of living, though. That's probably not necessarily yes. the event itself, especially if the TV ratings went up. Um, but yeah, what a, what a weekend overall. I mean, let's face well, it. Like when you go there, like you only see that corner, but when you're yeah. at home, you see everything, you know, see you see every yeah. single corner on the track and you all the telemetry and you can watch sector times, but yeah, I mean, the real deal is the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to be there. I've never been there before, but you got to be there once to experience it. Absolutely. And camping about on actually in saying that what was really cool. I don't know if you saw it as they went to grid up, they stopped at the top of the mountain. Yeah, yeah, I saw um, which that. Was, which was really, really cool. I really hope we see that uh, continue in the future. Um, and another thing I want them to do, because they copped a lot of hate for the soft tyres last year and how boring the race was, they switched to hards to stop that. But unfortunately, the racing was boring as well. Yes. What they should have done and what I hope to see um, in the future is mixed tyres. So they can qualify on softs and stuff, and we still see an epic, because um, let's face it, Super 2 were fastest 
um, than them all weekend. Yes. Um, but that was a given because obviously the whole point of Gen 3 is to make it more difficult to drive, which means um, a whole heap of error got removed compared to the Super 2's massive wings. Um, but, you know, we might have seen an epic one with the soft tyres, but at least, like, if they made the team start with, like, we'll have a stint on the softs, like, as a compulsory... Yes. You know, like, like Formula 1 does. Yeah. With their tyres. Compulsory one-stop on softs, um, I think would have changed the dynamic. Mm. And, yeah, I think the hard... The soft was wrong the year before, the hard was wrong this year. Let's see if they learn for, for the following year. And But overall, it will be the last... Uh, um Bathurst next year until the Supra that will be mm. the following year the Supra will arrive. So they're trying out this new championship model. We're almost becoming a second NASCAR series, really. They're really copying them, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel there's gonna be like I mean a lot of a lot of our drivers went over there. Maybe some of their drivers will come over here mm. with the new formats. Um it's interesting. It's, it's interesting. gonna be cool, but it, you can say as much as you want now, but we won't really know until it starts to take into effect next year. Correct. How well it goes. And obviously Bathurst next year will be really important because you have to be in the top 10 in the, in the championship to, you know, cross over the, the field. This also though brings the, some people, some teams may decide to be more conservative as well, mm. which could also lead to less overtaking, more boring races yeah. Should try and make the 10, try and make the seven question. Let's see. Would you like to see them go back? Okay, two, two, two questions actually, which tied into one. Would you like to see them go back to a non-championship round for Bathurst, or and or uh, have the main drivers partner up with each other like they used to? Definitely not the main drivers partner up with each other because of the fact that, I mean, it is still a championship and you are competing against a teammate and you do want to be your teammate from 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 that point of view. Now. Should it not be a non-championship event? Um, yes. Mm. Reason being is because they started the year at Bathurst, and yeah. now they've gone back and done an, and, and done the thousand. I think the I think Bathurst should be its own event, mm. its own special race. Because it used to be, I'm pretty sure from memory back in the nineties, it used to end in the championship used to end in October or something like that, and then the Bathurst one thousand would happen. Yes. Um, and I reckon we might see some more just people just going for it because obviously everyone knows the uh, how important Bathurst is. And if they remove the risk of losing a championship, it's, it might, we might see some more action. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. But now with this new format, and I think it's going to happen. You know, I yeah. think the new format now is all driven around this uh, making it more of a spectacle. And I mean, Adelaide becomes very, very important. That's going to be very cool. <laughs> that, that, to that's it. risking it, you know, mm. and uh, putting it on the line, uh, well, at least for four teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we, um, based off that, because we'll talk about NASCAR shortly, um, we saw some some pretty interesting moments, which actually have, have actually had a big effect on the playoffs. And we'll get into that. But we might see that in Adelaide down the road. But I guess yes. we'll have to find out. But let's have a look at the results exactly. for the big Repco Bathurst 1000. So Brody Kostecki and Todd Hazelwood, the, the SA man himself, uh, has won the Bathurst 1000. His first win in the main game as well for Todd. Uh, what a way to do it. Brody's nice. first uh, Bathurst win after losing it last year after a, a car problem. Unfortunately, which took him out. They, they had a really good battle with Gisbergen last year. Brock Feeney and Jamie Winkup back on the podium again for Winkup. Um, and this, in a way, this is sort of redemption, but yet again, not for their problems they had last year with the gear stick. Yes. Um, obviously, they'll be itching to get that win next year. But both those top two drivers in cars and teams did just, they were unreal. And the whole reason they, I guess the racing wasn't really racing was because they were so on par with each other. It was crazy. Yes. Um, but uh, as you said, Will Brown and Scott Pye, uh, P P3, which by the way, Scott Pye got a lot of interviews and publicity this weekend. He definitely after, did. <laughs> after the drama that happened. Yeah. Uh, that can, was a big one. Yeah, You can check out our YouTube channel and TikTok and so forth. If you want to check out uh, our opinions on that, check out ltmotorsport.com. Uh, we've written a nice article there as well. Um, but it's great to see. Uh, he deserves all the publicity, Scott Pye. Cam Waters and James Moffat um, finished fourth. What could have been for them, unfortunately. They've always never quite been there, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, just, 
yeah, one of and Chaz things. and Cam again. Yeah, they were together again. <laughs> Once again, the <laughs> Bathurst United. Inseparable. Yes. Um, <laughs> but even then, um, it's good to see Chaz and Lee Holdsworth not spin around this time. Yes. Like they saw at Sandown. So P5, uh, it could have been a lot worse. Like we said, uh, well, we didn't, we said it off there, but they actually had some contact with Brad Vaughan in the Boost Boost mobile car. That was big. Uh, when it could have been uh, very, very bad. It could have been very bad. And luckily there was no sign of damage for Chaz at all, which was good to see. Unfortunate, unfortunate for Brad, but it's a, probably, a, it's a good lesson um, for sure. I think both learned a valuable lesson. I mean, Chaz could have just waited in one more corner. Brad, the team, could have said, mm. step aside, you're being lapped. But split-second decision. Speaking of the of lapped, by the way, and it's not these guys, but it's the same team. J James Golding, David Russell, P6. Uh, they've been uh, pretty strong this year, which is good to see. Obviously, they've got a podium at Sandown. But that his teammate, Tim Slade, who is retiring at the end of the year, uh, he did some interesting blocking. Uh, he blocked Jack LeBron. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Barry Ryan was not happy. He actually stormed down to the new long garage. And I know <laughs> that, <was a> <laughs> that could have been bad, but um, yeah, it was a bit silly. I don't know what they were, th what Tim was doing. Um, he was 23rd and Jack was seventh or fourth or something. Don't like that. understand it, but ugh, just move aside. But by the way, I think Todd Hazelwood should um, replace him next year. Um, there are links and rumors that Richie Stanaway could do it. I would love to see Todd there. Um, speaking of Erebus, oh, hang on. No, we've got Anton Di Pasquale and Tony Delberto in DJR um, in seventh. And then we've got Jack LeBrock and Jaden Ojeda for Erebus. Richie Stanaway and Dale Wood. Um, by the way, good to see Ford's uh, all finishing a race. No crankshaft issues. Yeah. After they all got replaced from Japan, which was very, very last minute. They arrived Thursday or something like that, which was crazy. Uh, and then we've got Cameron Hill and Cameron Crick, the two Camerons in P10 there. Then we've got Thomas Randall and Tyler Everingham in 11th with Will Davis and Kai Allen in P12. What a weekend Kai had. I know. Super 2. He came into the weekend 100 and, 100 and something points in the lead. Now he's 40 points away. Um, what a heartbreak for him. Well, yeah. It's going to come back down to the city of Adelaide and the streets of Adelaide. And, um, yeah, I think I think I still believe we, we will see history. And we'll yeah. we'll see a back to back champion for the first time. Lessons, you know, lessons as a, as a young uh, as a young driver. Lessons for the entire Super Two field this year. There's been a lot of lessons. They were very clean. They were very they clean. Were very clean. I couldn't believe it. I think they all had a very big talk. <laughs> yeah. So don't do anything like you did at the beginning of the year. Exactly. And the fact, the point that race didn't even count. At but all. But also, um, shout out to all the mechanics. That worked to 16, 17 hour days mm. to get these cars back out on track. I oh. mean, some of the crashes were monstrous, you know, like how do you fix that? Yeah. Well, now you just think like, all right, we're chucking it in the bin. Well, Will Davison, his crash in qualifying as well as David uh, Reynolds. Yeah. One of the teams stayed up to 4 a.m. getting it done, yeah. which was unreal. And oh, you got to give credit to them. They're like, a, they're like aliens um, putting all those things together. But um you don't want it, but it's still really incredible to see the achievement Definitely. doing that. Um, but yeah, Kai Allen, um, massive character building. I'm sure he's really strong in Adelaide, so keep definitely keep an eye out for him for Super 2 at least. Macaulay Jones and, and Jordan Boys, the leading BJR car in 13th. Craig Lowndes and Cooper Murray, 14th. They were in the 10, unfortunately. Yes. Um, a, full, a full course of safety car infringement from Cooper. He uh, didn't press the speed limiter when he should have. Um, you know, lesson learned there as Five well. Five seconds too late. Yeah, exactly. It's a new thing for everyone, and it, you know, it was bound to happen to someone. Um, but he can use that lessons in the future, especially when he's at Erebus next year. Ryan Wood, Fabian Coulthard, 15th. Andre Heimgunner, Declan Fraser, 16th. Nick Perkett and Dylan O'Keefe, 17th. By the way, a real shame with Declan Fraser as well with uh, his house at Gold Coast. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. terrible. So uh, we're all thinking of you, mate. Um, hope you, you know, hope something good can resolve out of this um probably the worst thing you ever want to hear ever let alone I know. before a race but i know uh, real shame there uh and then we've got mark winner but a michael caruso in 18th tim slade cam mcleod 19th jackson evans dean fury 20th and then we've got uh james courtney jack perkins bryce forward uh Roy Botham, aaron love aaron cameron david reynolds warren luff and matt charter and brad vaughan and then we've got the dnf of matt payne and garth tander but overall Another Bathurst 1000. That's it. And now we're on uh, in a couple of weeks to the Gold Coast.